My name's uh, Kenneth Todd. I'm from Dunedin and I'm 62 years of age. Well, I've, I've always liked birds and, and the, you know, the flora and fauna in New Zealand, so, and I saw this as a little haven, you know, and uh, I could see that it could be a great potential, and for people, they can camp with the birds and, and get to see them in real life instead of on the television or in books or anything like that. I have counted about 53 species, not all native, and that's including seabirds. So we've got the kiriru, the bellbird, the tui, the grey warbler, uh, kingfisher and brown creeper, although they have uh, they've disappeared and so has the tomtit. And in the 40s this place was famous for its bush robins, but they've long gone and that will be through predation. And then there's the sparrows and the thrushes and the blackbirds. And blackbirds and thrushes are pretty good at spreading weeds because they eat the blackberries and that, you know, they get a lot of things like that. So, yeah. so I never worry about them too much. I mean, it wouldn't, go, it wouldn't harm them, but I, they're not the focus. It's the native birds that are my focus. I've, I've had a lot to do with them, uh, you know, raising them up, orphan ones. and Well, they usually come from the vet. Someone's found them and they've ended up at the vet up, at, up on the hill up there. And she'll just check them out physically, make sure they're okay, and then bring them down here and we'll raise them up. What we usually do is uh, buy mixed vegetables. Most prefer peas. Corn's popular, or and carrots not so popular. But we give them the, we give them the choice, then we find out which one they like, because they will. They'll just constantly you know focus on the one type of vegetable, and, and that's what they get. They give you a lot of joy, birds, or well, for me anyway. Well, I wouldn't say I gave up on people, but I thought these things need a hand, you know. And people have a big influence on other living things, so I sort of advocate for them. And I think a lot of people probably would if they had the opportunity or thought about it. But a lot of people are tied up and certainly live in different worlds and, and don't really mix much with the, the native flora and fauna. So. Quite an important piece of uh, coastal bush here. It's the only coastal bush between Cable Bay and Abel Tasman National Park, just seven acres. It's a little remnant, so pretty important. And I could see the potential of this particular area, this reserve. It was, a, it was pretty rough and ready in those days. And anything went, and you're, you're allowed dogs here in those days, of course, and, and the behavior was pretty, pretty chronic. That was another culture altogether, so. It was fairly well overrun with old man's bed and honeysuckles and passion fruit and all sorts of things. So the first year we concentrated really on the uh, getting rid of the pests, plants and animals out of the uh, existing bush here. Rats, there was rats for you know, heaps of them. So we had to get that under control as well. Yeah, feral cats, stoats, rats, and there was a poisoning program as well for possums. I don't know if any, everybody likes 1080, but I think if we never used 1080, I don't think we'd have a lot really in our native bird species to look at really. Yeah, so birds have always fascinated me because I think birds seem to be free. They, you know, they're able to go wherever they like really. And they don't seem to have any housing problems. All their housing's affordable. It's only about six sticks in case of the kiriru. It's, it's, a, bit of, it's a bit haphazard. And that's interesting to watch them nest building. Sort of get a few sticks established and then one of them will go away and bring back more material 
and you'll, see, you'll watch him break it off sometimes, or he'll actually break the, select the stick and break it off, take it over to the nest and the, the bird on the nest will grab it and just throw it on the ground because it obviously wasn't up to standard, so off he goes and gets another one. Well, they've nested around here a few times, but, and they're not very high off the ground, just in uh, the trees and around here. Actually, one year we uh, had one in a pine tree, and a child, a girl, climbed the tree and was patting the, the bird sitting on the egg. But then the boys came and threw pine cones, and the egg fell out, and it all ended up a bit of a disaster. <laughs> but, you know, that's how dedicated the mother bird was. She didn't move from the nest. So all those little things you see now and then, you know, that you'd never see or even think of, you know, this little wee quirky thing. Yeah, I lived the conventional lifestyle till I was about 30 and then uh, probably come to a crossroads and decided what are we going to do now? And I didn't really like the 9 to 5 much. So, and plus, the last job I had when I was living conventionally was uh, looking after dementia patients and so forth. So when you look at some of those people, I thought, no, there's got to be a bit more to this than staying on, on the farm all your life and then ending up there, you know. I, I sort of identified with that and thought, well, no, I think I'll do something else. So this is what we did. We, we, we could have bought a house in New Plymouth, I was living in New Plymouth at the time, or we could have bought the mobile home, so we bought the mobile home. It had been 1983. And then, and we've been off the grid since 1983 as well, so. And that was built in 1952, so it's about two years older than me. And doesn't move a lot, unless it's a strong wind or something. <laughs> That's about all. I suppose you could call it a seaside cottage, disguised as a bus. <laughs> Yeah, cooking there, and it's got it's got all the bits and pieces in it. Sleeping there, got a caravan there. That's for anybody, any guests that want to come over and stay. They can they got their own thing, and that's all got its own power system and water and solar, solar power. Yep, yep. So once you're off the grid, you can more or less go where you want. So you're not, you know, you haven't got wires. You're not attached to wires. Uh, I f I think that's the way of the future. So we've been well practiced at that. And it's uh, not expensive anymore. It was expensive when we started, but solar panels now is cheap as chips. And it's a great thing. It gives you independence. Yeah, I think, I think people should be too reliant on the system. I mean, the system you know, has, has its faults and has its good points, but I think, I think it does people good to be a little bit independent of it. And it gives you, and it makes you think about things too. About, think about how power is produced or Water, you know, like we seem to have this, a lot of us have this idea that it's an endless supply, and it's, but it's not, not really. Well, this was always our favourite spot when we used to come here to camp, because prior to being the caretaker, we used to come here in about oh, 1986, I think the first time we came here. And this, this little immediate area, that was a favourite place for us. And it's not too permanent, so that when the time comes, if we move on or someone moves in or whatever, that'll just change again or it'll just fade away. I'm the first one that's actually lived on site, the first caretaker. The rest live down the road and it's, oh, it's a little bit awkward for, for campers. When there's no one here they can talk to if something's not right or whatever. So it's a lot easier if you're on site. When I first started, well, I don't know, you probably get it. You might have got 3,000 people and now it must be up to, well, this year, possibly 15, 16,000 people. So, you know. That wasn't really intended, but that's the way it's evolved. I mean, that's just, that's just how the place is. Things just evolve. So, there's no plan. I'm one day at a time. I mean, you know, okay to have plans and all the rest of it, but... Uh,
you got to be flexible when you've got plans. So we just, that's the way we operate. Oh, oh that's good to do a commercial break. Hello there, Mark. How are you? Oh, I've been not. I just about, I just about, just about, just about disconnected myself. Margaret, this is Simon. Yeah, hi, we met. Oh, we met. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Right home. I'll just, I just have to do a bit of business. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave you with that. I don't need a receipt. I'll give it to you next time you come. Would that be all right? Yeah. Okay. Catch you later. Righto. It's okay, Margaret. You haven't changed your mind, have you, Margaret? No. No, come on, don't be bashful, girl. Sorry. You've got my card. That's true. Well, what I might do is uh, probably do a bit of pest, pest control. Just put a bit more in while I'm here in, on the, in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, do something like that. So there might be an area where there's a particular problem with some pest, you know, as uh, protecting the birds again, of course. So I'll probably carry on something like that. Because quite often the call goes up to protect bats or whatever's being attacked by predators of some kind. So I'd like to get involved in that. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm good. Right on.